the Thoughty OT podcast. Sort of a positive or, or growth kind of mindset is in, important for us. I think because, like I say, because I think we face a lot of social rejection and, it, you know, and it typically is a social deficit, I think we can end up with a lot of anxiety, depression and poor mental health. People with ADHD and autism who are comorbid with you know, depressive-like symptoms and are often treated for depression when really the depression is just a symptom of being rejected socially because of their yeah. autism. Mm-hmm. Um, I think having a strong sense of identity, like I said, who you are, what you stand for is key. It's absolutely yeah. key. And I think once you have that, you can we, we're able to lean fully into who we are and not feeling like, like I say, you know, we live in a neurotypical world and trying to conform to that's like trying to fit a square peg in a round hole. It just doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Um, So we're able to like, you know, really embrace who we are um, and go with those strengths because, you know, as they say, you you know, you shouldn't judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree. Well, there's certain trees we can't climb. Like uh, my son, for example, he's he's terrible at maths. Like it's like it really stresses him out. And I'm like, you know, Relate conversations again. I've had. Yeah, <laughs> as long as he can do the basics. But, uh, you know, he could probably take apart a computer and put it back together again. Mm. I personally think his skill with IT is amazing. Why don't we focus on that? So I think yeah. knowing who you are is really important for autistic people and embracing it. Yeah. I, th- I think another another aspect of it, you know, sort of more along the lines of a growth mindset is that, I, I mean, I do see that in a lot of people that they kind of, you know, they feel stuck, um, you know, within, within my, my work, you know, I, I interact with a lot of sort of young people who are uh, sort of have different sort of educational, special educational needs. Um, I also talk to a lot of, a lot of autistic people or of adults within the community and it, a lot of them either, you know, they feel like there's there's no way forward um but the i think there's there's also a a section of people which you know you could apply to to anyone um because we are as a society becoming so um accepting and inclusive um sometimes we don't put enough priority on growing as a person you know you just say hey this is how i am and this is how i'll always be um Whereas for me, for me, I've always had the the mindset of, right, this is how I am. Do I want to be like this all my all my life? Is the is there any way that I would want to change myself in a, in a better way? And you know, obviously, the the merit of that change is is very dependent. You know, you could say, well, I want to be better better with girls, um, so I'm I'm going to get loads of dates and stuff like that. I'm going to do everything to um, make sure that I can get to that point is it you know that's not always the best outcome for you as a person um just because of those kind of desires that you have um it but i i think it's also it's it's a balance isn't it because there are some um core characteristics to yourself um sort of based from your genetics and experience that um are really kind of just neutral and you know, depending on the environment that you're in, that you're in, um, they can be seen as negative or positive. Um, but the, at the same time, you know, I, I, f- I feel like it's it's always important to to be self reflective in that sense because there is a lot that you can change about yourself if you, you know, if you feel like your internal world, your internal values your character as a person is kind of suppressed from becoming realized uh, for a long part of your life it's going to be it's going to be hard to really realize that and it's it's important to to know that you can do that you can act in in a way over time make new habits that that put you in a place where you are that person that you feel inside um and i I, I see with some people that they just they have that idealized person inside and what they do is they fake it and they put on a facade and they don't actually make those changes those um 
small changes over a long period of time that will lead them to become fully realized as a human being because they 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 have this kind of cognitive dissonance where they they think they're this person so they display these the these these ideals but they're not that person um and they 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 probably do you know everyone does even despite what age you are there's always things that you can work on there's always mm-hmm. things that you know would make you uh um a better person in your in your own eyes um and i i think sometimes because we are so accepting um of people as they are we have this kind of culture as i am who i am and if you don't like it you can screw off um you know sometimes you might be right and sometimes people might be assholes and be giving you really bad advice but it's always worth sort of hearing people out especially if they have positive intentions with it um so it's it's finding that balance isn't it because you don't want to be so narcissistic that you think you're something that you're not and you present yourself as something that you're not and sort of be delusional in that way but at the same time you don't want to put yourself down so much that you're not this person that um you feel like you're always inadequate yeah um and I, i like to think of it as a journey because I'm not at the place where I want to be now, but the fact that I'm on my way to be someone that I want to be, and I can see those changes over the long long term, yeah, it, it inspires me a lot, and it ke- it keeps me sort of positive and sort of um, you know satisfied that I'm able to have control over my life and who I want to be. Yeah, um, I really like Carl Jung. Um... Like I've read a lot of his stuff and he, mm-hmm. he describes the process that you're talking about as the individuation process. And I think sometimes as uh, neurodiverse people, we have so many negative experiences throughout the course of our life. There's these layers of trauma that build up. Yeah. So we end up becoming this person that's so far away removed from who our, you know, our authentic self is, is that we end up living almost a lie. Um, and I think the only way that you can individuate or really become, you know, the best version of yourself, if you want, is by stepping out of your comfort zone. Sometimes we retreat into what's comfortable, don't we? Because we don't want to face or we don't want to experience any sort of emotional, um, uh, hurt or any, um, discomfort. But like you say, that period, that process of growth involves stepping out and trying new things because, Otherwise, you live kind of a bit of a socially isolated life, don't you? Mm. And that can't be fulfilling on any level, whether you're neurodiverse or not. Um, yeah. I, I, I mean, I, 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 sorry. No, go on, you go. I was going to give the, the the example of, you know, how I was when I was younger. Because I, you know, I, I as, as you said, I, I kind of built myself up in taekwondo. <laughs> I built myself up in, in education. And I kind of, I had this feeling that people should be wanting to like me and it just wasn't something that um happened you know like people didn't come up to me and say oh that's really cool and you know got involved i actually had to to have the agency to interact with people and talk to them and and communicate um i think you know up until that point i thought that if i achieved certain things that things would just be handed to me and i was very sort of um i guess resentful um you know a lot of the experiences that i had with younger they were mostly negative um people sort of viewed me in a negative light i you know i internalized that and i kind of wanted to fight against that um and through a lot of sort of inter internal thinking sort of you know looking at myself, how I am, how I act, I kind of picked up that, you know, actually, I'm probably just being a bit narcissistic in that way. Like, why, why should they? What am I, what am I doing for them? Like, just because I'm good at these certain things, does that mean that I'm deserving of everyone's time? And so I was, I was, I was thinking about that and I was like, you know, hey, look, like, Tom, do you, do you really need to have that, that approach to people? And if, if people don't, give you that do you do you push them aside do you dismiss them or do you actually just you know have a look and actually just 
communicate with them and, and talk to them and see if I you think, get on. So. I think, it, and I actually discussed this with somebody I used to work with because where I used to work in um, in high security mental health, you were dealing with what a lot of you call PDs, which are personality disorders. So they are clinically unwell, but there's not like um, uh, there's not a, a psychiatric problem. They have what's called a personality disorder. So yes, yeah. um, I think sometimes autistic people can come over with a certain degree of haughtiness. Yeah. But I remember my colleague said to me, so um, in the DSM-5 narcissistic personality disorder, it's a, it's a clinical uh, diagnosis that you can get. He said, but when you take, when you strip the label off it, what is it really? It's just somebody that was wounded as a child and never mm. developed a, a healthy amount of um, sort of uh, self-love. Yes. So then they develop this almost persona that's really just to defend them from further hurt. That's all it mm. is. So um, it's understandable that because I think when we are younger, we go through a lot of traumatic experiences and you do, I've seen it in many people that I've known, they can develop this haughtiness about them, which comes over as arrogance and conceit. And really they probably just went through a few challenging situations as a child and they never fully recovered from it. Yeah. You know, narcissism is just a, a wounded child. That That's all it is. 